All right, Greg, thank you so much. Uh, awesome job and loved it. Hey, we're going to dive into these four questions that Greg has uh, presented. And so if you want to grab uh, grab your notes and look these over. Before we go there, though, just a couple quick announcements. Uh, remember, next week is Testimony Week, 20-year anniversary. I've already received some texts uh, about your interest of being uh, one of our testimony guys next next Tuesday. If that's you uh, and you know that you need to say something, 60 to 90 seconds, let me hear from you and uh, would love to just involve you in that. Second reminder, tomorrow night, show me the father movie. I got free tickets. First come, first serve uh, right here in Lee Summit. Uh, contact me if you're interested in one or two tickets uh, as we get that word out. So that's just a reminder on that. Hey, let me let me share one thing with you about these questions. Um, I've got a I've got a college friend that reached out to me this week from what he lives in Anchi, Washington, and uh, he's going to begin to get up uh, at four thirty on uh, Wednesday morning. So he's going to be on on the Zoom call tomorrow. And he told me, Rod, I've already I've already printed these notes off and I've already answered the questions. And I was like, Wow, what an entry point for him to uh, a new TGIW attendee, but. Uh, he was so excited to fellowship with some guys very, very early on the West Coast uh, to join us, uh, and that will start tomorrow. But I was impressed that he has already, he said, right, I've already answered the questions. And I thought, wow, way to go. Way to go, Byron. His name is Byron Scott. And so uh, some of you might be getting your first look at these, but Greg's asked a question about bond servant in question one. He's asked a question about... Uh, what it means to live in freedom to serve in question two. He talks about this whole concept of being a saint in question three. And then I love, Greg, what you pointed out, the grace and peace. And that peace always follows the grace. So guys, a little free for all here. Uh, I invite you to respond to any one of those four questions uh, and give us a reflection on, on uh, this talk. And, uh, and, and, and the floor is yours. So just unmute yourself. And, and uh, we'd love to hear some of you reflect on what Greg shared today from Philippians chapter one, verses one and two. Hey, well, they're still thinking. Um, uh, thank you for that response, Jim. Uh, and I, I do love that. I do love that verse. You know, we, there are verses that everybody, I mean, you've been to church for a long time, you know, verses, you know, Romans 323, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. You know, 623, um, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I, I, I've i probably used that verse more than almost any other verse in the Bible over the years in just sharing my faith. But the verse right before it, Jim just pointed out, and it's so, so good. Uh, this whole passage right there is talking about slaves of righteousness. That's who we are in Christ. Uh, we're not righteous in and of ourselves, but because he is perfect and he is righteous, that word imputed righteousness, it is, it has been given to us. It's, it's not by us, but it's been given to us by one who is righteous. Verse 20, uh, let me just read 20 through 22. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. We talked about that just a moment ago. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things in which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. Verse 22. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end which is eternal life, man, Jim, thanks for that reminder. Uh, Cause that is a great, great verse again, that for whatever reason it gets overlooked because it sits next to one of the more popular <laughs> verses in the word of God. Uh, guys, I, I'm, I'm like you in many respects. I, I haven't thought of my life in these terms nearly enough. And I pray that whatever time God gives me, uh, whatever I have remaining, that I, I will work. And that's not even the right word. I will serve him joyfully, not dutifully, joyfully with a happy heart. 
because there's nothing better I can do than to be a servant of the Most High God, like that slave girl was telling everybody about Paul and Silas. So I hope that just makes some sense. I hope that will really inspire and encourage uh, each of us. I just like the affection that Paul has for the Philippians, the way he starts the book about the way he starts the book out. And all my, I thank my, I, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your con- partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. But he sees the best in them, and that 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 always, as, as a guy that's read that book a lot through the years, that always I like the way that starts. But he has a great affection, and I just think at different times in my life where I've gone to church, you, especially when I'm new there, the affection you have for some of these people, some of the folks you meet and get to hang out with, you just you just look forward to being around them. And that's kind of what I pick up on here at the beginning of Philippians. Yeah. Hey, Stevie, isn't that the, I can call him Stevie because he is my brother. Hey, isn't, is that the book that you memorized moons ago? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. I, I remember Steve did memorize this book and I, I was amazed. Um, he just felt that was something the Lord wanted to do, something he needed to do. And I don't know how long it took him. Uh, he was a good memorizer though. And uh, uh, he had opportunities uh, to share the entire book from memory. And um, yeah, that, that, that's just a, that's a sweet memory, man. I hadn't thought about that until now. Good stuff. This makes me think of how I don't consider myself a bond servant and I, that's not the way I, I need to be, but think of one a dramatic example and one or some mundane examples of the dramatic one is Mother Teresa being interviewed in the slums of Calcutta. Some reporters said, How, you know, why would you spend your life like this? And she said, God has such a hold on my life that I can't be anywhere else. Mm. Mm. That's a that's a that's a bond servant of Christ. Mm. But on a on a on a local level for me, it's you know, I know lots of have known in my lifetime lots of were older people, which I are one now, but uh, who who behind the scenes nobody knew, but them that they took care of people, people who were sick, people who were needed money, people who uh, needed Christ, people they, they just worked behind the scenes, and it's I won't my 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 example I won't tell you what what it is about, but anyway it's you can't tell when they're there, but you can tell when they're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and uh, I I love that example. It comes from a barbershop quartet. But anyway, so my I would have to say that I I I would ex- like aspire to be one of those people. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I've I've served in various ways where you know people people couldn't tell when I was there, but maybe they could tell when I'm not. But um, so I think that's where we can be servants mm. in, in our lives here. Good. That's good. Thank you, Larry. You know, Greg, I appreciate the fact that you brought out what the word uh, do loss means, uh, you know, and you maybe some of you guys have heard of do loss ministries and it's really their spirit is they want to serve and they want to do it um, many times behind the scenes without fanfare as Larry kind of described there, you know, without acknowledgement. And I have a friend, a dear friend who had that kind of a do loss spirit and here is his, uh, the phrase that he always says, he says, I'm going to do something nice for someone today. And if they find out, it doesn't count. Uh, he wanted it to be very anonymous, very, you know, behind the scenes, did not not want, you know, the accolades and the affirmation. He just wanted to serve and give his life away and do kind things. And it was, it was part of his ministry. It was part of the beautiful things it was, uh, that he was. And he was that way when I first met him almost 30 years ago. And uh, he's still that way today and uh, just very attentive to having his eyes and ears open uh, and looking for ways that he can serve. And he really does have that bond servant mentality. What's interesting about him is he also had a very decorated military career. So he could, he could walk around with all the pins on his chest and, you know, kind of be puffed up with pride and, Hey, you know, I accomplished this and I did this for our country and that for our country but uh, he's chosen 
to take that uh, bond servant route instead. And it's part of his, his legacy, his ministry, and his uh, and the friendship I share with him. He just has that kind of a spirit, mm. that kind of a, a do loss attitude. Yeah. Well, you know, even, <clears throat> even the word deacon, which he, he mentions there in verse one, two, um, deacon is not a translation of a word. It's a transliteration of a word. The, the Greek word is diakonos. And so diakonos, deacon, they kind of sound alike. But diakonos literally means a servant. Mm. And uh, so, you know, even deacons in our church, that's, that's, their, that's their, their call by scripture, not to administrate, but to serve. Mm. The elders uh, administrate. Not just the not just the path, but the elders and and not all churches are even set up that way. I get it, so I'm not getting into some debate there. But I'm just saying the word deacon and the reason it's we see them starting in in Acts chapter six was because there were needs that needed to be served and dealt with, and that's how the diaconos, the the servants, uh, even started. So yeah, you know, I I think a lot of times we just we just don't think about service. We don't think about being servants or slaves to Christ um, because, well, that just, you know, that's probably somebody else's job. You know, surely God's got something better in store for me. <laughs> and yet, man, that's, that might, that's our greatest title. It's our greatest title. And we just need to do a better, you know, I think mean, we, we can all improve in being joyful servants of the Lord. So I, I just love the way he started out. And I love the uniqueness, again, tied in with his relationship with these people in Philippi. I keep that in the back of my mind that, I mean, it's like us coming to TGIW, you know, those of you who have, you know, maybe been to a, a different TGIW or, or uh, maybe uh, the Lee Summit one on a Wednesday there's just something about the chatter that takes place in there. We got to shut you up before we can even get started because there's so much fellowship going. Mike, we see it at the, uh, the, the, the OP group as well. And it's just Northland group. I, I like that. I like that. I like that bond that he had with, with these, these folks. It's a special letter. And Greg, thank you for pointing out the whole saints uh, piece. Um, some mm -hmm. of you know, I've got um, history helping with youth baseball over the years with my friend Les Norman here in Lee Summit, also Mike Sweeney, and both of them call their teams, their their nickname is the Saints, you know, and uh, we talk to the kids, you know, um, in those very early uh, winter practices before they actually put their uniform on about you know, the, the high calling, the high responsibility they have um, to represent not only their teammates and this organization well, but, you know, this, this organization is founded on biblical principles and they're representing, you know, the Lord and, uh, and the Lord views them, those who know him as Savior and Lord as a, as a saint. And, and it gives a great talking points with these boys to begin to, you know, say, here's, here's, here's the expectation of the kind of conduct that you're, you know, and again, you're, you know, you're received fully by the Lord. You know, it's not performance. It's not, uh, you know, you're loved and God views you as, uh, as his child. And, and just trying to, you know, we, had, we saw some kids come to Christ. We saw some kids grow in the relationship with the Christ. We saw parents impacted as well, just because we put it out there, you know, and, and really helped them to understand what it meant to be a saint. So, Greg, thank you for pointing that out this morning. Just reminded of some of those neat, neat memories from um, back when my kids were you know, back in youth baseball, back in those days and working with Wes and Mike and others. Yeah. There's a funny story about uh, some of you may know the name Harry Einside, uh, Ironside. He was a Canadian American pastor, theologian. Uh, he pastored Moody Church in Chicago for almost 20 years back in the like uh, 20s through almost the 40s. Um, he was an author. He was just a brilliant, brilliant theologian and a great orator as well. 
Well, he had, he had been on the West Coast, and so he was going back to Chicago, and he's on a, a train. And on this train was, I don't know what you call a bunch of nuns, a gaggle, a, I don't know. A, a lot of nuns were on the deal making their trip too. And he was talking to them and they loved this guy. They loved talking to him. They, they were listening to him speak and, and uh, it, it, they just had a really cool relationship and all. And he was uh, visiting with them about stuff. And somehow the, the conversation got to talking about the saints. And he said, have you ever seen a saint? And they were like, no. And he said, well, I want to introduce you to one. And they're like, are you kidding me? And he stuck out his hand. And he said, hi, I'm St. Harry. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, that's really what the scripture is about. That's what Paul is talking about. Every true believer in Jesus Christ is a saint. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we're perfect. Then we were, we're exceptionally holy but we are a saint in the eyes of God. It's just like when God looks at us, he sees the cross first. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what we look like. He sees Christ in us. Yeah. We could no more be cast out of our eternal glory that is before us, that is come, than Jesus himself could be cast out because of Jesus and because of the promise of God. So if you know God, you're a saint. If you're a saint, your home is secured. And praise God for that. Amen. And, and, and Greg, thanks for your point. It's not about perfection, guys. That's, that's not the qualifications of a saint. There was or would be no saints. That's right. Uh, so so uh, that, that, I love that picture that imagery of, of the cross first that's what he sees first so good good anybody else want to share on this uh servant bond servant uh do loss saint grace and peace I haven't got into grace and peace yet grace and peace is a beautiful beautiful concept so i find it interesting that in the old testament it also refers to the saints mm -hmm. And in, and there, it's looking forward to the Messiah, yep. but they are the consecrated ones. Mm. And David refers to them as God's delight. Uh -huh. oh, that's good. Uh, you know, and so that has a different connotation. In the New Testament, it's about believers, but but in the Old Testament, it's also about believers, mm. uh, but in a different sense. But they're both the same. And I find that 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 parallel pretty interesting, you know, the how they connect from the old to the new. Hey, Bob, do you remember the passage that you're referencing there? Uh, where it's Psalm 16 is one of them. Where uh, Daniel, Daniel 721 refers to the saints and he's referring to uh, uh, the people of Israel. Uh, the consecrated ones. Uh, About the God's delight. You said God's. Yeah. Which one was that? Yeah. Is that Psalm 16? I think it's Psalm 16, I think. Verse 3, I think. Thank you. So, it, you know, it has a different. Saints just uh, doesn't mean in Christ alone. It does mean that, but it also means the consecrated one mm -hmm. set apart for God. Yes, set apart. I'm smiling because I, um, when my when my dad passed away a couple of months ago, everybody uh, was uh, sending their condolences, and they kept saying to my mom, "Katie, you're a saint," <laughs> you know, and you know she was. She just uh, received a lot of uh, recognition and accolades because, uh, you know, being, being, you know, married to anybody, you know, and serving them and giving their life away to them uh, the way she did for my dad. She was a saint and uh, loves Jesus, loves Jesus so much. So anybody else got a comment or reaction to uh, what Greg shared today from Philippians chapter one, verses one and two? 
And this is, this is Dean. I've got a thought and maybe a, a question for some discussion. Um, when you, you come to Christ, you know, you make a decision, you know, you want to follow God and start going to church and look at yourself as a Christian. And then um, you receive the Holy Spirit. That's a big difference. Um, you know, then I, I want to say I'm more was more of a slave, but I still had lots and lots of sin in my life. Mm. Lots of things that I wasn't willing to turn over to God at that point. And then as you uh, progress in life and uh, and become willing to to release that stuff, you grow more and deeper in in Christ and get to know Him more and establish you know, better fellowship and and I guess I guess my point is is that you know we say you are or you aren't, but it seems like there's more to it than that. Once you are, there's there's a lot deeper stuff there to to grow into and uh, become closer to God. And it's something I didn't recognize until my journey kind of kind of got into it a lot deeper. So I don't know what's more. There is more, I'm sure. But anyhow, just a thought for the discussion. Well, I, I will say this, Dean, when, when a person comes to Christ, when they, when they confess and repent of their sin and understand themselves as... Um, unworthy before a holy God and surrender their, their lives to him, put their trust and their faith in him. Um, we get all of God right then, you know, now we're babes in Christ. Absolutely. And that's, that's maybe a great illustration. We are babes in Christ and, you know, you don't bring a new baby home from the hospital and say, man, we're so glad to have you here. We love you. What's ours is yours. Uh, that's the kitchen. That big old rectangle thing there is called a refrigerator. You help yourself to anything, anytime you want, because it's yours. I mean, what, what's ours is yours. No, we can't do that when they're babies. We have to feed them. We have to teach them. And it's the same way in the spiritual life. We have to mature. Paul talks about that multiple times in his letters about going on to maturity so you're right, Dean, in that respect that, um, you know, I, Paul himself in Romans chapter seven, man, he said, the things I don't want to do, dadgummit, that's what I do. The dadgummit part, that's just part of the message. That's not really in the manuscript there, but he said, that's just the way it is. I've got, even Paul had to deal with and live with sinful thoughts and sinful deeds until he was promoted and graduated to glory. And we all do. But I think you're what you're saying too is as we grow in our walk with the Lord and surround ourselves with other people who will be there to help us and to encourage us and to hold us accountable. Um, yeah, it, we mature in our in our faith, and uh, but I tell you what, man, it, it's work. I mean, it doesn't just happen by osmosis. You have to. I mean, you have to avail yourself to get in the word, have a desire to really be that servant of God who grows in his walk, in his relationship with him. So I think of the word sanctification, you know, I mean, we're being sanctified and redeemed. And again, uh, and we may not even know where to start. And that's where the Holy Spirit, which you referred to, Dean, say he's the helper. He helps us in that journey, in that process of, you know, uh, of, you know, inviting him into our life and our story and our situations and saying, I trust you and I believe you and I have faith in you. And, and uh, he walks with us in that sanctifying process till the day we see Jesus face to face. I mean, we don't ever come to a point where we say, yep, got it all, got it, we're done, you know, and, you know, and I can now just kind of coast. No, it's a, it's a lifelong journey. And the cool thing about the journey, it's not a journey of, of, uh, the, you know, where we're just 
you know, drudgery where we're just like, you know, you know, that as, as we get farther in the sanctification process, we actually become more free and we experience more grace and more mercy and more forgiveness. And, 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 and we're not, we don't, we're not under the restrictions of that old man. We really can blossom and experience him to the fullest. And, uh, and that's the cool thing. And I think that's one of the fears of, of many people that come to Christ. They think, oh man, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be so, you know, sequestered. I'm going to be so, you know, I can't do anything. I can't be, no, it's, it's the exact opposite. You know, as you become more sanctified and more, uh, you know, eventually you're going to become more glorified, you know, as a result of dying to self, you actually can live even more free. And that's, that's a beautiful thing about what you're talking about, Dean, that journey of faith. And uh, the two words I think about, you know, is so many people, they think that churchianity is where the action's at, you know, and it's all based on duties and all based on attendance and all based on my tithe. And it's that churchianity mindset. No, this is a, this is a Christ in Christ relationship. That's where, that's where we can experience under the abundance and not just, uh, you know, you're not just doing something to do. You're actually experiencing it fully. And that, to me, that's, that's where the action's at. And that's, that's what uh, I know I've, di- I've discovered firsthand, and many of you guys uh, experience firsthand as well. Uh, when you die, you actually live, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, to that point, guys, um, lately, I think I shared last week, uh, you know, the journey of dying to self daily. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 31 says, I die daily. Uh, that's what I've got to be doing because – uh, we have the new spirit, right? Uh, but we still have the flesh. So that's constantly wanting to um, you know, bring us back. And so I've got to be uh, dying daily to that. But he's, we have the power, right, to, to make sure that that's the case. That's Christ in us that makes that happen. So uh, to me, that's to this point here. It's, it's an ongoing, that's the sanctification process. We become more and more like Christ. And that's going to happen until our last breath, until he returns. So it's it's dying daily that that for me is is been uh, the last probably last month that has been really um, pressed on me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Galatians two twenty. But I've, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Yeah, that's good. I was going to say just based off what Rod and what Dean were saying, I think. You know, when you first come to Christ, you get the Holy Spirit and you understand that it's a gift to you. Um, and then going back to being a bond servant, you almost feel convicted that you need to be listening to the Holy Spirit in every walk of your life. I think that's such a part of being a bond servant. It's not about what your thought process is anymore. You always need to be searching for what the Holy Spirit's telling you to do in your life. Thank you, David. It's a good word, Greg. Thank you guys for participating, engaging. Uh, Great to be with the brothers. And uh, we'll say goodbye. And uh, God bless you. Have a great rest of the day. And uh, for those that we'll see tomorrow, uh, either live at TJW or uh, at the movies tomorrow night, looking forward to connection with you. God bless. Have a great day.